السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبۃ المتقین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم و علیہ علیہ و صحبہ اجمعین اما بعد With the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, last week we talked about the importance of having ikhlas and sincerity in performing good deeds and we also mentioned few benefits of having ikhlas in good deeds. And today we will go through some of the possible harms and dangers of not having sincerity and lacking ikhlas because having ikhlas in performing good deeds is crucial rather this is one of the basic conditions for any good deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if a good deed lacks ikhlas and sincerity then that good deed has no value in the sight of Allah dhul jalal ikram It is not only that the good deed is not accepted by Allah, rather that good deed itself can turn into an act of shirk. And this is based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is one of the first harms or the dangers of not having ikhlas and sincerity. And opposite of sincerity is either riya which is showing off or not having or not having ikhlas or not having sincerity due to other reasons perhaps in order to gain a worldly benefit or in order to gain a fame so it can be any reason because of which the person deprives from sincerity and ikhlas so the greatest danger and the harm of not having ikhlas and showing off or riya is that your good deeds are not only destroyed and they are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather your good deeds turn into the acts of shirk and associating partners with Allah dhul jalal ikram And this is based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna akhwafa ma akhafu alaykum ash-shirk al-asghar One thing that I fear for one thing that I fear the most for yourself for the ummah he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ash-shirk al-asghar the small and the minor shirk the companion said what is the minor shirk associating partners with Allah because shirk is something serious in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shirk is the greatest sin is the biggest sin and there is no sin bigger than committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna shirka la ghulmun azim And if a person dies committing shirk without repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive him. To that extent, the shirk is dangerous. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what I fear the most for yourself is the minor shirk. The companions asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the minor shirk, O Messenger of Allah? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-riya, showing off. You do good deeds in order to show off, in order to prove to people that you are a righteous person, you are a pious. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained it further and he said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ إِذَا جُزِيَ النَّاسِ بِأَعْمَالِهِمْ On the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward the people. For their good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell those who did good deeds in order to show off. Allah will say to them, Idhabu, go, ila alladheena kuntum tura'oon. Go towards those who you were showing off. 
because you did good deeds to show them, not to show me. So you showed off your deeds to them, so go and seek reward from them. فَانْظُرُوا هَلْ تَجِدُونَ عِنْدَهُمُ الْجَزَاءِ Go and see if you can get any reward from them. Because you did the good deed because of them. In order to show them. In order to prove them that you are a pious and righteous person. And in, in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hadith Qudasi, أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُّرَكَاءِ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ I am not in need of any partners. I am the most self-sufficient to have any partner and even when it comes to the acts of worship and good deeds and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, and this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith al-Qudsi man amila amalan ashraka fihi ma'ya ghayri taraktuhu wa shirka whoever performs any good deed apparently he does so for my sake apparently but he has actually associated partners with me by showing off, by pleasing other people, not pleasing me solely, not solely for my sake. Rather, he offered a good deed, apparently for me, but he associated others with me. And he showed them off. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنَا بَرِيءٌ مِّنْ I am free from such person. ashrak, And his good deeds are for those for whom he offered that good deed. Because he did not do so solely for my sake. So this is one of the biggest harm and biggest danger. It is not only that you will not be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the deeds that lack ikhlas and sincerity, rather your deeds become the act of shirk. So if you are praying in order to show off, you are committing shirk. If you are giving in charity in order to show off, you are committing shirk. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly said, Man salla yura'i faqad ashrak. Who prayed in order to show off, he committed shirk. So his salah is not salah, rather his prayer is an act of shirk. وَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ يُرَائِي فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ Whoever gives in charity, whoever gives sadaqa in order to show off, then this is not an act of worship, this is not a good deed, rather his charity itself is, a, is an act of shirk. Because he did so in order to show off. Whoever fasts in order to show off, in order to prove to other people that he is such a pious and righteous person, then فَقَدْ أَشْرَكْ His fast itself becomes an act of shirk. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ That is why having ikhlas, sincerity in every single good deed is so important. As I mentioned previously, the statement of Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, a great tabi'i, he used to say, I never found anything more difficult in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than keeping my intention pure and clear and sincere. And in reality, it is true. Keeping your intention pure and sincere, it is not an easy action. It is very, very difficult. Because for every single good deed, for every single good deed, you have to have sincerity and ikhlas. You may do one good deed ten times. And it can be the case that you have ikhlas nine times, but one time you are deprived of ikhlas and sincerity. You lack ikhlas. And because of that, your deeds are destroyed. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. So, performing, for example, salah on a daily basis, establishing five daily prayers, is not easy. It is very difficult. 
in order for you to take time out from your busy schedule, your work, your job, your daily routine, it is very difficult to spare some time and to establish five daily prayers in order to pray every single prayer within its specified time. It is difficult. But what is more difficult than establishing five daily prayers is to keep your intention pure and clear whenever you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah, in order to offer your salah. Giving in charity, spending your wealth, giving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the wealth that you, have, that you have earned, for which you have worked hard, you have spent your time, you have sacrificed so many things in order to earn that money, in order to spend that money in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must have ikhlas. If you do not have ikhlas, if you are not spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, with pure intention, then your charity will turn as an act of shirk. And keeping ikhlas and having sincerity at the time of giving, it is not easy. It is not easy. Giving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taking money out of your wealth and your money, the money that you have earned and you, and, and, and you have worked for it hard, very hard. It is not easy to take some money out and give to the poor and needy. But what is more difficult is whenever you give and whatever you give to the poor and needy and in good causes, you keep sincerity and ikhlas. It is more important. And it is because of your ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can multiply your reward. And even if the deed is small, as we mentioned last time, that sometimes a person gives only, only half of the date in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he gets the reward of spending as much wealth as the amount of the mountain Uhud. Just because of his ikhlas. A person performs one good deed and his reward is written 700 times. You give one penny and you give one pound in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in your and the record of your good deeds it is written that you have given 700 pounds although you gave only one pound. It is all based on your ikhlas and sincerity. But on the other hand, if you give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you give in charity 700 pound without ikhlas, without sincerity, then they mean nothing at all. And you will get no reward whatsoever. That is why one of the biggest harm and the danger of not having ikhlas is that it, uh, it turns your good deeds into the act of shirk. That is why Imam al nabawi rahimahullah, he began his book saying, Babu al-Ikhlas wa ihdar al-Niyya fi jami'i al-A'mali wal-Aqwal al-Barizati wal-Khafiyya. And also, another reason of not having ikhlas or not having sincerity is when your intention is to gain a worldly benefit. Whether it is a wealth of this dunya or a fame or anything else. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith that if it is for the sake of getting married, for the purpose of marriage, you do something good, you are not going to be rewarded for that. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Man kana yuridu al-hayata dunya wa zinataha Whoever desires the beauty of this dunya, whoever aims to get the benefit of this dunya, and his end goal is to achieve the adornment and the zina and the beauty and the glitter of this dunya, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we give them the full reward in this dunya. And they are not deprived from their reward at all. Their reward is not reduced at all in this dunya. But as for in the hereafter, for such people, there is nothing for them in the hereafter except the fire of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the fire of hell. وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nullified is whatever they have done in this dunya and void it, it is what, whatever they have done in this dunya. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمْ يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا Whoever does something good in order to get the immediate benefit, meaning the benefit of this dunya, ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha. We do give him the benefit of this dunya, but not as the way he wanted, but the way we want. Although he did a good deed in order to get the, in order to gain the worldly benefit. And he had a goal to achieve in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we do give him that, but not the way he wanted, but the way we want. And whatever we want to give him. We do not deprive him from his goal. And he does receive it. But as for the hereafter, ثم جعلنا له جهنم. For the hereafter, we'll give him nothing other than jahannam, other than the hell. يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا And he will enter into the fire. He will enter into the fire as cursed and condemned. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا And whoever intends the hereafter, whoever keeps his goal and goal only, the hereafter, and he does whatever he does in this dunya, in order to receive a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And he makes effort for that. Then Allah says, مَشْكُورًا They are the ones whose efforts are appreciated and they will get the reward for the efforts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we help both of them. The one who wants to achieve a worldly benefit, we help him. We do open the doors for him. We provide means for him. And he keeps working towards it. As for the one whose goal is to achieve the reward in the hereafter, we help him as well. So both of them are helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one of them receives his reward in this dunya in the form of fame or worldly benefit or wealth of this dunya or whatever. As for the other, he does not, he may not achieve much in, much in this dunya, but his ultimate reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in another ayah in Surah Al-Shura, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِيدَ لَهُ فِي حَرْثِ Whoever intends the harvest and the reward of the hereafter, نزيد له في حرثي, we increase for him his reward. As he mentioned the hadith, as he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the person is rewarded up to seven hundred times because of his ikhlas and sincerity. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa taala is referring here. من كان يريد حرث الآخرة نزيد له في حرثي. Whoever intends the reward and the harvest, whatever he's doing, whatever he's planting here, he wants to harvest it in the hereafter. Nazid lahu fi harthi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are going to increase his harvest. Woman kana yuridu hartha dunya. And whoever intends the harvest and the reward and the outcome within this dunya, nu'tihi minha. 
وی گیو ہیم وما له في الاخره نؤتيه منها وی گیو ہیم سم اف ایٹ سم اف ایٹ اینڈ یو ول نیور ایور اچیو 100% what you want to achieve in this dunya because of good doing good deeds وما له في الاخره من نصيب as for in the hereafter ما له في الاخره من نصيب there is no share for him in the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in surah al-baqarah فمن الناس من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا they are people who say oh Allah give us in this dunya Just imagine, my dear brother and sister, whenever you raise your hand, you always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the worldly benefit. You ask for job and risk. No doubt, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But ask yourself, how many times you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His forgiveness, for His mercy, for Jannah, to be in the Prophet, to be in Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to be protected from the fire of hell. to be protected from the punishment of the grave to be saved from the horror and the fear of the day of judgment how many times you actually ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that and how many are, how many times you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the worldly benefit so in in these two ayat of surah al-baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has compared two people the first one the one who always makes dua he says Rabbana atina fi dunya. Oh Allah, give us our reward in this dunya. Whatever I'm doing, I'm I'm giving in charity so that so that you return me multiplied time. You return as you have, oh Allah, you have promised in the Quran. Man dal ladhi yuqridu Allah qardan hasanan fa yudaifahu lahu adhafan kathir. Whoever gives in my way, I return. I give him more and more. So you give in charity and you ask Allah, oh Allah, increase my wealth. And, and, and this is your goal. That's it. You do not expect any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. If this is the case, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ For such person, for such people, there is no reward, there is no share for them in the hereafter. And On the other hand, there is another person who says what? رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, give us reward in this dunya. Give us, grant us good in this dunya. And grant us good in the hereafter. And save us, protect us from the, f- and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Allah says, "Ulaika lahum nasibun min ma kasabu." They are the ones who are going to have the great share out of what they have earned in this dunya. So they will get their share in the hereafter. That is why Sayyiduna Anas radiyallahu taala who says, "One du'a that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam repeating the most was this du'a: "Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar." O oh Allah, grant us good in this dunya. O oh Allah, grant us good in the hereafter as well. And protect us from the punishment of the fire. So if you do any good deed in order to just simply receive a worldly benefit, then there is no, there, then there is no reward for you in the hereafter. And especially when it comes to those good deeds that... people expect you to be doing solely and purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but within your heart you have the intention to gain the fame of this dunya so that people can like you you post in the facebook while praying doing tawaf performing hajj in the state of ihram wearing the ihram sheets going in makkah and Medina and Muzdalifah and Arafat and Mina and giving in charity, taking pictures and you posting in order to see how many people like and how many, how many people comment on your posts. If this, if this is your intention, then do not expect any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your reward will be with those people to whom you showed off. I would like to mention here the hadith 
of Sayyiduna Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala. He was once asked to narrate a hadith that he directly heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala who said, yes, I can tell you the hadith that I heard from the blessed mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he was about to begin the hadith. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the very first people by, which, by whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to begin his judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to decide about them are going to be three types of people. And as soon as he said this part, the first part of the hadith, he fell, fainted. And then after a short while, he woke up and then he started the hadith again. And then second time, when he said this first part of the hadith, he repeated the first part of the hadith, again he fell faint. And then third time. On third time, then he could complete the hadith. What is the hadith? The hadith is frightening, very serious. He says, the Prophet wasallam said, the very first people who will be thrown in the fire, in another narration, the wording is man bihim, bihim naru jahannam. The very first people by whom the fire of hell will be lit. And they are going to be three types of people. The first one, Rajulun Ustushida fi sabilillah. The very first person is going to be the one who was martyred and was killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While fighting for the sake of Allah in order to defend the religion of Allah in order to protect the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was martyred. He sacrificed his soul. He left this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him forth and he will ask him, he will question him. And Allah first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have him acknowledge his blessings upon him. He will, he will remind him of his blessings and his, and his favors and his bounties on him. And he will acknowledge, he will acknowledge all of them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, I gave you bravery, I gave you strength, energy. What did you do with this? He would reply, oh Allah, because of my bravery, because of my strength, because of my energy, I fought in your way. I fought in your way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply, Kazabt. You are lying. You did not fight for my sake, rather you fought so that people could say that so and so was so brave. And people have said that. People have praised you. People have said, so and so was so brave. He was so brave to the extent that he was martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you wanted this and you received it. You got it. So today you have no reward with me whatsoever. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will instruct the angels to grab him from his forehead and to drag him and throw him into the fire. And then there will be second person. And the second person, that is why I said last time, it is easy to talk about the sincerity in ikhlas. It is easy to say and advise others that you should have ikhlas. But the one who is advising others, he must question himself if he himself has sincerity in ikhlas, even when he is advising others. That is why this is one of the most difficult topics. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the second person will be brought forth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again, similar to the first person, will make him acknowledge his bounties and his favors upon him.
he will admit and he will, he will acknowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, I gave you the ability to recite my Quran. I gave you the ability to recite my Quran. And I gave you beautiful voice. What did you do with this? I gave you knowledge. The wording of another hadith is, I gave you knowledge. I blessed you with knowledge. So what did you do with this? He will say, oh Allah, I recited Quran for your sake. I taught people Quran for your sake. I passed on the knowledge for your sake. Allah will say, Kadabt. You are lying. You did not do so for my sake. Rather, you did so so that people could say that you are a very good reciter of the Quran. So that people could say that so and so is very knowledgeable. And people have said that. So there is no reward for you with me today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will instruct the angels to grab him, to drag him and to throw him into the fire. The third person will be brought. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind him of his bounties and his favors upon him. And he will remind him of having great amount of wealth of this dunya. Allah will question him, what did you do with that wealth that I gave you? He will say, oh Allah, I spent in your way day and night. Whenever I came across a poor and needy, I gave them. So I gave them so that you are pleased with my practices and my actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Kadabt, you are lying. You gave in charity, you spent on poor and needy so that people could say that so and so is so generous. And people have said that. So that was your goal. You wanted fame. You wanted people to praise you and people have praised you. So today there is no reward for you with me and he will be again, he will be grabbed and dragged and he will be thrown in the fire. Very difficult hadith. We all, without exception, we all need to ponder on this hadith again and again and again. Remind each other, remind ourselves and to try our best to have sincerity in ikhlas and to renew our sincerity in ikhlas whenever we do any good deed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to have ikhlas in every single good deed that we perform, in every single good action that we perform, that we offer, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ikhlas and sincerity so that our deeds are multiplied by the mercy and by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we perform one good deed and it is multiplied by 700 with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we need. We must be begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, grant us ikhlas and sincerity. And there are some practical steps that we need to take. In order to, in order to save our deeds, in order to protect our deeds from showing off, from riya, we need to take some practical steps. The first and the most important one is to try our best to hide and conceal our good deeds. This is the first step. Try to hide your good deeds as much as you can. Obviously, there are good deeds that you cannot hide from others. For example, your five daily prayers. When you attend the masjid for congregational prayer, you must attend because this is the instruction of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a Muslim male, you should be attending the masjid for five daily prayers. So this is something that you cannot hide. But even within this deed, there are steps that you should be taking in order to conceal. For example, if you attend the masjid five times a day, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do not need to tell others who do not know whether you go to the masjid or you don't. 
You don't need to tell them. You don't need to send a message to others that I, although you add the word Alhamdulillah, I do this, 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 you should be hiding it. Those who do not know, they do not need to know. Leave them. Do not disclose your good deeds. Those who knew, those who saw you in the masjid, they saw. That's it. But other than this, other than this, other than the first salah, you should be offering more nawafil at home where other people cannot see you. And the scholars have said, this is one of the reasons that the Prophet wasallam has recommended for the, for the voluntary prayer, for the sunnah prayer to be offered at home. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is more reward for praying sunnah and nawafil at home than praying them in the masjid. For congregational prayer, you should attend the masjid. You should be praying in the masjid. As for voluntary prayer, as for sunnah prayer, you should try to pray at home. And this is one of the ways of hiding and concealing your good deeds. When it comes to charity, give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, sometimes you do need to give openly so that other people are encouraged because of your action. If this is your intention, you will be rewarded for that. But most of the case, in most of the cases, shaitan can whisper in your mind when you give in the way of Allah so that other people can praise you. If this is, if, if this is the whisper that you are having, and if this is the doubt that you're having from shaitan, then try your best to conceal your charity as, as much as you can. Or do this way. Give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly and publicly whenever you think there is need for that. And your intention is to encourage others. But this cannot be your intention every single time. Every single time you donate. Rather you should be donating and you should be giving in charity sometimes secretly as well. So that that secret and that good deed is, 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 and, and, and that good act and that good deed remains secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, we are going to, inshallah, mention the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has highlighted the benefit of keeping such good deeds secret only between you and Allah because such good deeds are the deeds that really help you in times of difficulties and hardships. When you are trapped and when you are attacked and when you are afflicted by calamities and hardships and difficulties, at that point, you raise your hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you remember and you make the mention of those good deeds that are only, solely between you and Allah. No one else knows. You help a poor and needy, no one sees you. You do other acts of worship, no one sees you. You make dua secretly, in your private. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, the best prayer after five daily prayers, the best prayer is the night prayer. When people are asleep, when you are alone, when you are in the darkness of your room, rest of the household, rest of the members of the family are asleep, you wake up at night and you have conversation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make dua, you prolong your qiyam, you do the recitation of the Quran, you prolong your sujood. This is between you and Allah. So the acts of worship, the good deeds that you perform in secrecy and privacy, they are the one who are going to be most likely performed with sincerity and ikhlas. So there are more chances for you to have ikhlas and sincerity when you conceal and hide your good deeds. This is one of the steps that we must take. And within this, as part of this, should include that if you have done a good deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never 
try to disclose it. Because if you have done so for the sake of Allah, do not try to disclose it. Keep it between you and Allah. You'll get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway. You'll get the reward in the hereafter, if not in this dunya. But Allah subhanahu this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do good deeds in your secrecy and your privacy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala casts your love in the heart of other people, in the heart of the people around you and people love you themselves. So you do not need to approach them. Have those secrets, those, those good deeds as a secret between you and Allah. And also, you should try to avoid from the places, from the events, from the times where deeds are showed off. You should try your best as much as you can. If you have the fear that if you attend an event, and you participate in that event or an activity that can change your intention, then stay away from it in order to protect your intention, in order to keep your intention and your niya pure and sincere. Because the riya and showing off can be before performing good deed, it can be during while you are doing good deed, and it can be after you have performed good deed. In all these three steps, we need to protect our good deeds. So the good deeds that are protected, that are saved from riya, from showing off, they are the ones who are going to be rewarded for. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah dhul jalal ikram grant us ikhlas and sincerity. Let's begin with this chapter. باب الإخلاص وإحضار النية في جميع الأعمال والأقوال البارزة والخفية إخلاص and sincerity and to have the intention present in all the deeds, all the actions and all the statements whether they are apparent or hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء They were not commanded, they were not ordered except that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while purifying their religion, their worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they establish the salah and give zakah solely for the sake of Allah. وَذَلِكَ دِينٌ قِيَمًا This is the straight religion. This is what is required from people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Hajj لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا The animals that you slaughter and you sacrifice uh, at the occasion of Eid and Hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their blood and their meat do not reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What goes towards Allah dhul jalaikram, what reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at taqwa minkum, your piety and your ikhlas and your righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Ali Imran, Qul in tukhfu ma fi sudurikum aw tubduhu ya'lamhu Allah. Say, if you hide whatever you have in your chest, in your, in, in, in your hearts, or you disclose it, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Then Imam al-Nawwi rahmahullah quoted the very first hadith of Sayyiduna Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who says, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Verily, the deeds are based on intention. Deeds are rewarded, accepted, or rejected based on the intentions. And every person receives and gains according to what he intends for. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Whoever migrates, whoever does hijra solely for the sake of Allah, and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or towards allah and his messenger fahijratuhu ila allah wa rasuli then no doubt because of his sincerity ikhlas he will get the reward of having hijra for the sake of allah dhul jalali wal ikram and remember the reward of doing hijra is that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said innal hijrata tahdimu ma kana qablaha 
because of hijrah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of your previous sins all of your past sins are forgiven if you do hijrah if you make hijrah for the sake of allah dul jalali wal ikram wa man kanat hijratuhu li dunya yusibuha aw imra'atin yankihuha fa hijratuhu ila ma hajara ilayhi and whoever migrates in order to achieve a worldly benefit or oh, he made the hijra in order to get married to a woman fa hijratuhu ila ma hajara ilayhi then his hijra and, the, and 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 his migration is for what he intended for so he is not going to get anything other than the worldly benefit and other than achieving the uh, achieving his goal of getting married as for hijra as he said hijra is one of the greatest good deeds rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever migrates for the sake of allah allah forgives his all of his past sins but it has to be for the sake of allah dul jalal ikram so we need to take some time out and talk about the concept of hijra because it is very important and inshallah with the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next week we'll talk about the concept of hijra the benefit of hijra the rules about uh, the rules of the sharia with regards to the hijra when it is wajib to make hijra when it is mustahab to make hijra and who has to make hijra in what circumstances we have to make hijra what type of hijra is accepted and what type of hijra is not accepted all of these points will be covered next week inshallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and ability to have ikhlas and sincerity in every single good deed that we perform and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for all the good deeds that we have performed that we perform and we continue performing for his sake innahu sami'un qareeb mujib subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh